All right, so in this video, we're going to learn how to derive second order derivatives. So from uh, finite difference approximations to second order derivatives by using Taylor series expansions about a central point. So using the same two equations that we used in the last video, now we're interested in solving for f double prime of x. So the general rule of thumb with derivations is that in this case, what you want to do is you want to eliminate all the derivatives that come before this one. So we want to eliminate f prime of x because we know what the val these are the values that we're gonna usually gi be given in the problem, but we won't be given values for derivatives, so we want to get rid of that. So how can we do that by performing an operation between these two equations, well, we can add them together and that will get rid of the first derivative. So let's do just that. Let's have f of x plus delta x plus f of x minus delta x. Now we're going to have this plus that that becomes 2f of x. This and that cancel out, so we're left with plus 2, so delta x squared, because 2 on 2 that cancels out as well f double prime of x and now we have minus plus that cancels out as well so the next term would be something like delta x to the power of 4 2 of 4 prime I believe and then we'll have f fourth derivative with respect to x and then this continues going on and on like that alright so the next thing we're going to do is well now we want to solve for f of uh, f double prime so how can we do that? Well, first of all, let's move this to the other side. So we're going to have f of x plus delta x. And because it is a point in between those two, I'm just going to put it in the middle here. f of x plus f of x minus delta x equals to what? Well, let's divide both sides by delta x squared. So let's have delta x squared on this side. So this is f double prime x. Now we divide it by delta x squared, so this becomes 2 delta x squared over 4 prime f of 4 x plus all and all that. And then we know that if we perform a truncation about this term, this is going to become a term of magnitude delta x squared because this is the leading term in this sequence. So this is what we have here. So in the end, our derivative or find a different approximation for f double prime of x is going to be the following. We're going to have f of x plus delta x minus 2 f of x plus f of x minus delta x and then all of this over delta x squared. And we know that the accuracy or the truncation error in this case is going to be in orders of magnitude of delta x squared. So it's reasonably good. I mean, we could get away with some uh, computations based on that sort of accuracy as long as delta x is quite small. And this gives us the value of the derivative essentially at that central point, or the second derivative rather. And if we plug this into some differential equation and then solve for the next value in line, we can usually solve that, but notice now, once again, we have the same issue that we had with the central difference scheme for the first order derivative, and it is that we require to know two initial points in, in terms of f. So if we know two initial points, then that means that we kind of know what the solution looks like, and in reality, that's never the, the case. We, we can give it an initial condition because that's what we choose. We choose this value based on what we're interested in seeing happening. But if we know the next value in line, we need to know exactly what the function looks like because this could be anything. I mean, I can draw you a function like this that looks something like that. And, you know, well, you can choose the initial value. That's no problem. You can just put it anywhere. But if you choose the next value, then you need to know exactly how that value proceeds from the previous one. So if you already know this based on that, then that means you already know what the function or the solution to the differential equation is. And so why would you even employ a numerical scheme to solve that? So that's the, the big issue with this kind of uh, formulation. And we will see that numerical methods, the two main ones that we're going to learn in this series, which are the Euler method and the Ranch-Cutter method, 
they suffer from the very basic issue that you cannot solve second order or even higher order derivatives because they require access to information that is not available. They require you to know more than one initial condition or one more than one initial value, which implies you already know what the solution is. So in order to solve a second order or a higher order differential equation, we're going to have to do something that is called reducing the differential equation to a system of first order equations that can be solved simultaneously. Because in that case, you only require one single initial condition or one single initial value to solve them. So even though in, on paper this looks perfect, but in practicality we cannot really use this because it requires too much information that we do not have. So, um, by the way, this is called a central second order differential uh, difference scheme for the second derivative because we have a point, we're taking it about a central point and then we have a symmetry around it. So this is just a central finite difference for the second order derivative. But you can see where I'm coming from when I say that we cannot really use this to solve a differential equation because we simply wouldn't know what this value here is. We might know what the initial value f0 is, but if we know what f1 is, we need to know what the function is in order to be able to tell exactly what that value is. And so this is not going to be the case when we're solving equations that have no exact solutions which is the main application of numerical methods to solve unsolvable problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the Euler method in the next video, and we're going to learn later on how to apply it to higher order differential equations, and we can see how we can get around this simple problem by simply reducing the differential equation to a system of first order differential equations.